Once upon a time during the Vietnam War, there were lots of spider holes, tunnels, and underground posts operated by North Vietnamese fighters. These ranged from one-man foxholes to immense and complex nexuses, to even unmanned punji traps or snake pits, manufactured for the use against American and other anti-communist forces supporting South Vietnam during the war. The tunnels, however, were essential to the armed communist political revolutionaries in South Vietnam as demonstrated by the Ku Chi tunnels that were used in numerous military campaigns during the Vietnam War by Viet Cong. These were not only concealed headquarters, but served as supply routes, food and weapon storage, infirmaries, and living quarters. Despite being used for so many reasons, it was miserable living conditions, and often living underground in somewhere as covered in rainforest as the area was entailed scorpions, snakes, rodents, venomous centipedes, fire ants, and spiders along with the package. Viet Cong tunnel dwellers weren't only adult males, but included women as well as children. This was their home for the daytime, and they only came out at night to scavenge, farm, or fight. They would be forced to stay under for days at a time during periods of heavy bombing or GI activity. The mucky, tight space conditions led to malaria and other infestations running rampant, and a captured VC report claims at any given time, half of a unit of the People's Liberation Armed Forces unit had malaria, and that 100% had intestinal parasites of significance. The main campaigns launched an effort to infiltrate and destroy Kuchi system were Operation Crimp and Operation Cedar Falls. These operations began on January 7, 1966. 30 tons of high explosive drops onto the region from B-52 bomber planes. After waiting for the man-made disaster struck ecosystem to settle, 8,000 troops from U.S. 1st Infantry, 173rd Airborne, and Royal Australian 1st Battalion forged through the entire vicinity without much to go off from. The tunnels they did find were usually underestimated at first and not realized to their fullest. It was a very hazardous duty to inspect and secure these tunnels where they were extremely dangerous. These tunnels were interlaced with many types of traps such as the infamous grenade in the can trap, a wire fixed to a grenade and lodged inside of a can in the dirt and on the other side attached to a small trip post such as a nail or a stake. Once the wire was tripped, it detonated the blast. Another method used was interweaving bombs with the NVA and VC flags because the Viets knew how much Americans would capture enemy flags. This trap ignited when the US troops started to take down the flag. They would do this same trap with many other keepsakes or other things that the general infantrymen might consider war trophies. The clever tricks never seemed to end. One of the most difficult traps to detect was a step board with a hollowed out place below in the hole where a nail or firing pin set off a 762 or any round of ammunition upon impact, launching the bullet up into the unsuspecting victim's foot. The most common response to dealing with a tunnel opening was to stick gas grenades inside or pour water or hot tar down. Many would even lob a couple grenades to crimp off the entrance. These tunnels, however, were usually good at fending off these methods by use of an air filtration system and various trap doors covered inconspicuously and known by each of the VC troops involved. The Australian 3rd Field Troop, an engineering specialist unit commanded by Captain Sandy McGregor, crept into the tunnels, which they stripped up and down for four days exhaustively and found ammo, communications, medical supplies, food, and intelligence. This specific time around, only one fatality occurred where Corporal Robert Botel passed when he became trapped inside of a dead-end section. Captain McGregor had a press conference in Saigon after Operation Crimp where he coined his men as tunnel ferrets. An American journalist never heard of ferrets, and so he used the term tunnel rats, which stuck. The U.S. was made aware of their thick-headed mistakes and heard of Australian success with their tunnel ferrets. So soon after, General Williamson, commander of South Vietnam's Allied Forces, issued an order that every tunnel be properly searched when discovered, considering a great deal of intel could be lacking if left unsearched. U.S. military began training an elite group of volunteers to become artisans in tunnel ratistry. Armed with only a handgun, flashlight, a knife, and a piece of string in case they need to disarm a trap, inch by inch, they frenzied fraught underground analysts 
disappears for the slightest off feeling thing. There wasn't a right or wrong in this line of work. It called for a special type of person. Normally these moxie drenched souls were standing no more than 5 feet 6 inches. Their patch says non grata anus rodentum, which is a Latin phrase when translated into English means not worth a rat's ass.